Hey, thanks. Now, there was a unilateral declaration of spring today and a collective sigh of relief. The, I, the idea of Britain, what we imagine this country to be, is deeply invested in the countryside. For the men and women who live there and try to make it yield them a living, though, the promise of spring is something else. British farming is in crisis. It's not an original headline, but what is new is that this isn't a crisis of the kind we've had to get used to in sheep farming or dairy farming or cereal growing. It's everywhere. The sap is rising, the birds are singing, the lambs are gambling, and as ever, farmers are moaning. But this time at least, they do have something to moan about. Agriculture is in decline. In 1970, farming made up 2.8% of Britain's economy. Today, it's just 0.7%. All farms are expected to earn less this year than last. The average English cereal farmer might see his income fall by 11% on last year. A lowland livestock farmer can expect an income fall of perhaps 44% this year. And hill farms, where the average profit is said to have been a mere £6,000, could see their income fall by over half. The weather's been no friend. Last month's snowstorms are said to have killed 50,000 animals, while crop farmers have also been affected. Potato plantings, for example, this year are predicted to be a seventh of what they were last year. The UK is expected to import more than twice the quantity of grain shipped here last year. Retailers are already predicting the bad weather will drive up food prices. Ten years ago, the average weekly shop on food and non-alcoholic drinks was £43.50. The most recent figures show that now costs just short of £55 a week. Nothing in the garden is coming up rosy. Zoe Conway has been hearing the stories of three farmers, and you might find some of the images in her report upsetting. I've farmed here all my life. I have never seen weather like it during April. Jack Jones's family has been farming here on the Welsh border in the foothills of the Berwyn Mountains since the 17th century. I think there's about 15 sheep missing down along here. Yeah, we, we get a lot of losses, but something like this is just, uh, well, pretty horrific. Every day, Jack's been finding dead sheep. They were caught in a blizzard just as they were starting to lamb. So far, he's found more than 70 ewes and 200 lambs. Nature is a cruel thing. The ravens and the buzzards have had a rise now. Luckily, she'd only got one lamb, but that's one lamb too many. There it is. Now we'll come back later on and pick that one up. Nature has been unforgiving for much of the last year. Before the snow, there was the rain. The grass didn't grow properly, and so this flock's spring diet consists of winter feed, grain, which is costing Jack 500 pounds a day. All in all, it's been a horrendous 12 months. We can't really blame the politicians for the weather, but the feeding costs and things like that, it's uh, fuel costs are crippling, really crippling. You're hoping to be able to pass this farm on to your grandson if he yeah, decides, yeah, well, he's very little, but if he well, decides to be a farmer. Yeah, yeah. Are you worried about what you're going to be passing on? The way farming is going, we've got to produce more and more to keep exactly where we are. Whereas my grandfather could survive here on perhaps 100 sheep and keep you know, over 2,000 to be in exactly the same place, really. I, I love farming and it's, it's not a job, it's a way of life and uh, now this last three weeks, you know, when you're in the lambing shed in the middle of the night, I've just thought, you know, what the hell am I doing here really? <laughs>